So Synology reached out to us and said, hey, we're hosting this big event in Taiwan and we're releasing like sneak previews of products. So why don't you come along? And we said, hell yeah. So they flew us out there and we asked them difficult questions. We wanted to see what's new and we wanted to see what's coming. That's going to be new for all of you, including ourselves. And many of us use Synology uh, within our team. I sent along Jordan and Jonah to be able to represent Techler there. So they'll be doing the coverage for this. Enjoy the video. So Jordan and I just got to the Synology Global Launch event um, and we're here to check out a ton of products around us. Uh, at 2 o'clock they're going to be announcing some new stuff that they're unveiling over here so we are sticking around for that. Synology's surveillance station is traditionally one of the most polished and popular parts of the Synology ecosystem and it has a ton of integrations as you can see here with security systems and all sorts of other cool stuff but it does require a pretty high upfront cost to get into the ecosystem. You have to purchase a NAS and you have to have the infrastructure to get everything set up the way that you want. The first thing that I love about this product is that you can use it completely subscription free. Um, besides the initial hardware cost of these cameras themselves, there is no ongoing licensing fees or anything to use this new C2 surveillance cloud system with these cameras. These cameras have local storage on each one that the footage gets recorded directly to and then this cloud management portal just accesses that footage remotely. So there isn't a lot of ongoing costs on Synology's end to run these cameras and they can offer that for free. Now Synology is going to be offering some subscription options. Um, if you want cloud backups of that footage for example, uh, they will be offering subscriptions based on uh, retention time so you can get like 30 or 60 or 90 day retention period um, in the cloud as well if you want that peace of mind um, and they will also be charging for some more advanced functionality uh, such as like multiple users and that kind of thing but by and large almost in everything that these cameras can do will be available free of charge so you're not locked into that monthly subscription forever when you buy these cameras and that includes a lot of the more advanced functionality that these cameras can do as well uh, some of the stuff that these cameras can do include AI detection features on the edge, so it can count things like vehicles, people, and it can detect things like loitering, for example, if that's something that's important to your business. Um, and all of that is included with the licenses that come with these cameras uh, for free. The second thing that I really love about these cameras is that they are completely end-to-end -end encrypted. And I think that combined with uh, the local on-device storage and free licenses is really what's gonna make this product really special for a lot of people. This means that Synology employees or potentially even hackers have no way to access this video footage whatsoever. I know that there have been a lot of more novice surveillance companies in the past uh, who have promised end-to-end -end encryption and their claims have fell well short of that um, but Synology does have a really long and reputable track record in both the security and the surveillance spaces. I've talked to a few of their product managers and uh, it really seems like they know their stuff when it comes to security so I have a lot of faith in all of this working super well. So there's no word yet on the final pricing of these cameras and I haven't gotten a chance to take these home and review these quite yet. We're just seeing them for the first time here but I do think that there's a really good chance that these could potentially provide one of the best balances between value, data security, and data ownership in this space. I really think that these could easily become a top contender as far as my go-to recommendations for home or small business surveillance for sure. If you want to see a review of these cameras when they are released, um, definitely let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about these cameras and whether you think that they might make sense for your setup, um, whether it's at your home or maybe a business that you run. Um, if you have any opinions on these cameras, I would really love to hear them and I'm sure Synology would as well, so uh, let us know below. At the Active Protect launch event, um, it's basically a new family of backup appliances that we're launching. So it's focused on data protection for um, our business customers primarily and larger organizations, at least compared to our previous backup solution. What makes Active Protect stand apart is that it is a cluster design, so it can support up to 2,500 servers and sites, uh, depending on how you want to set things up, which means that you can protect over 150,000 um, entities. So that could be endpoints, servers, virtual machines user accounts on cloud services. All of that is managed from one single interface, one click, and it's global. So we offer this in three ways. You can either enable firewall, or you can disable the network cards, or even just shut down the whole hardware, depending on the organization's protection requirements. So Synology has been protecting organization's data for over two decades now. 
and from hardware monitoring to multi-layer access controls and on top of all of these security centric capabilities we make sure that appliances can keep organizations data backup there when they need it. I know you already have uh, some a backup solution in C2. You also have Active Backup for Business, which is probably what many Synology users are already familiar with. Um, are any of those solutions being deprecated in favor of this new solution, or is this going to coexist alongside the solutions that you already have right now? Active Backup is still going to remain a viable product in the near future. So we are going to continuously develop both platforms. So Active Protect, again, is more for that centralized large-scale management. And Active Backup can still be used on the individual single system level. And it can also be integrated like you mentioned, into an Active Protect um, cluster. So existing customers can like basically partially migrate their backup infrastructure over without replacing every single device. During the presentation, uh, they talked a bit about how the drives and everything is pre-configured so you just get this appliance out of the box. Um, what does the expansion process for that look like? Are the drives like user replaceable after the fact or um, is, the, is the process more like adding new expand? or new appliances to kind of expand it as you go, or how does that work? Exactly like you said, it's basically you would add new appliances. You are not doing any like customization, or you're not swapping out the drives, you're not like rebuilding the storage pool. It's basically, if you need more storage, you probably are exceeding the number of um, recommended backup, um, let's say clients or endpoints per system, you will be adding another one. And then all of that is still managed through the same interface. We looked at uh, some Synology Drive stuff and some new AI features in Synology Drive. Um, what are like the hardware requirements for AI in Synology Drive? Is that going to be available to existing customers, or um, is that going to require a new product? So for Synology's AI implementation on Synology Drive, right now we are leveraging external parties. So for example, you could pick between OpenAI, Azure AI, or Gemini. Um, whatever model that is available, you can choose. So there's no explicit like hardware requirement for, let's say, to implement this into Synology Office or Mail Plus. It's, it's more like it's external at the moment. Yeah. So it sounds like everyone who has Synology Drive currently will be able to upgrade to this um, AI solution? Yes, this is the current plan. Uh, we do do the de-identification on-prem, so obviously that's removing a lot of your sense potentially sensitive information from the prompts before it gets sent out to like third party. Uh, but that's not something that's super heavy on um, the NAS. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that, that kind of covers my next question. Um, what kind of like de-identification uh, does that cover? Like, What information would be removed before it's sent off to the cloud? Okay. So we have a few predefined um, configurations. For example, it can detect um, um, common names. You can uh, choose a language. Um, let's say birthdays, passport numbers, credit card numbers, addresses. There's a few predefined ones. You can also customize it. Let's say you have these unique identifiers. If, if there's a pattern, then you can probably give it, um, put it into the system, and then it'll look for these patterns, and they'll remove them and re put, um, integrate them into the uh, received response. Predefined ones such as, you know, uh, more sensitive information such as just so social security numbers or any specific ones that are dedicated for different countries or different different domains. Have you done any testing with like language models that you can run locally like instead of sending like, it to the like cloud? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely on our roadmap, but I think what we're trying to do is simply uh, because a lot of our users currently are, you know, prosumers and a lot of users that with the with the you know current AI landscape, yeah. a lot of people are still utilizing the the public available ones mm -hmm. that are running by the large company. So those are our priority at the moment. But as you know, we are uh, after all, we're now a task storage on prem version like system provider. So that's definitely something we're looking at. I know there's some like open source versions like local AI that are like open yeah. AI yeah, API yeah. compatible. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've done any testing because I saw that you can like change the yeah, we can API, like yeah. maybe you could point that to a local one. I don't know if you've tested that out at all. I don't though, think or... internally, I, I think we've definitely played with it, but we haven't really commercialized it. So yeah. we wouldn't want to rush it out to yeah. make sure, you know, a lot, on, on top of, you know, all these, you know, integrability and comp compatibility issues. We want to make sure we're providing the right product to them. Yeah. The users. Makes sense. Yeah. In the future, we plan to probably have like an edge AI, so like we can have our own AI model in our NAS, yeah. and then mm -hmm. we can use our own data to make it like more like a trusted AI. Got it. Yeah. yeah.
we still want to celebrate, you know, our our partnership and our you know collaboration with our enterprise users. You guys, if you want to have more information, maybe you can follow us on on our LinkedIn and Facebook. Maybe we'll have more information on there, and we'll, we'll keep everybody posted. Thank you both for joining me today. Um, that all sounds great, and we'll check out the rest of the event. Awesome. Thank you. Both. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. The really cool thing about this video was Synology didn't give us much info going into it, and so when Jordan and Jonah started sending me footage, uh, that was the first I was seeing of a lot of these products. Um, so to kind of give my loose thoughts and analysis, uh, so you all have something more to take away from the video, um, I think the cameras are actually honestly my favorite thing personally, and I think that's probably the most applicable thing to most of our audience. Um, a lot of people, especially in our forum and in the community, ask about uh, just how to have security when it comes to cameras um, and also home security and anything in the home. And it's really hard. And so far, my best recommendation I've been giving is using a NAS like Synology and then having something that hooks up to that so you host the data yourself. But it's still not that easy. And like Jonah said in the video, the friction points are really high. So uh, really difficult to try to do that yourself. Um, maybe for the average user, for a lot of our audience, maybe they'll be willing to do that. But I think this is a really cool recommendation because this is something I can recommend to like friends and family now. Like, hey, you guys want a home security system? You want end-to-end -end encryption? And it didn't even have a subscription fee by default. It sounds good on paper. So we'll see how it looks at the end of the day. I'm really excited to review that once we get our hands on one and we'll be sure to upload a video so you all can see that because I'm like, that's something I want to personally implement into my life. Um, the AI features are cool. Um, it's something that I've seen in other products. So uh, maybe when that's out, I'll take a look at it and it will be nice to use here and there. I'd personally love to see more of like an on device kind of situation. And I'm sure Jonah is going to start experimenting with the thing he asked them about in regards to maybe um, hosting your own uh, like local AI and then sending the API there. So we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. And then of course, there's more of the enterprise stuff. And this for me was a little harder to follow because I don't really manage anything in the enterprise, but it seems like like from what I hear, this seems like pretty desirable stuff for people who are in enterprise. And it was really interesting. There's actually going to be a full interview that we're going to leave down below that's going to come out in the next few days. So check out the description or a card. It'll once it goes live. Um, pretty much we did a full interview with them and they were pretty much talking about how Synology is trying to almost branch out and uh, do more individual uh, kind of services for specific people, especially enterprise customers, because enterprise customers don't want all in one, which is what we currently see with a lot of Synology stuff. They want individual services for specific things. I kind of have to trust them on that because I'm not an enterprise customer, but it makes sense to me why uh, an enterprise uh, kind of company would want individual things for all individual use cases. I could make it, so I'm really glad to see Jordan and Joda could make it. So I have to thank them for all the footage they got. I want to thank Synology for hosting us and flying us out um, and allowing us to cover their event. It was a really beautiful experience for us. Um, and I also just want to thank you all for listening. And I hope you all kind of got a good sneak preview for something and there was some kind of value here for you all. Um, and that's all I got. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, stay subscribed to TechLore. We'll definitely do more coverage of the Synology stuff going forward. Um, I've been really liking a lot of their stuff lately. And um, this video is going to be going on our Synology NAS for the rest of the team. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to our patrons. You can find ways to support TechLore down below. And we'll see you next time.